I wish so badly that this was wine. This is Ribena. <laughs> I'm stress drinking Ribena. <clears throat> oh, 2020. Hi, how are you? My name is Angel. Uh, today's video is part three of my fragrance collection series and the final part. Before we begin, I need to disclose two things to you. One, I just broke one. I just broke one and it's really stressing me out. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I've actually cried today. I'm like sniffling for my... <laughs> I actually cried a little bit because I'm dramatic. But yes, I broke Afternoon Swim by Louis Vuitton. Uh, okay, hold on. She's only three weeks old in my collection. I'm, I'm stressed, I'm quite stressed out about that. Um, and secondly, I forgot one at my parents' house. Um, I was meant to go pick it up this past weekend, but I didn't go home this past weekend. So you're not gonna be seeing Bubble Bath by Margiela. That's it, everything else that I have is here. This is gonna be a 30 video, it was meant to be a 32. I think the first one was a 31 and the second one was a 32, or the other way around. Um, and this is meant to be a 32 as well, but um, those are the circumstances, okay? All right. Um, I'm upset. I'm upset. Hold on. Okay, let's jump in. I have a few cheapies, um, like designer cheapies. Then I have a few um, regular designer fragrances from uh, more obscure designer houses and then a few niches. I don't have much niche at all uh, because Niche is not very easily accessible where I am to test. Um, you can buy, there are online sellers, uh, but there are not many fragrance stores that I can go to to test niche, so I don't have a very large collection. Because I learned quite early on that blind buying is no different than gambling, to be honest. <laughs> okay, let's jump in. First among my cheapies, Javan Musk. I have loved this since 2010. I bought uh, both Musk and White Musk when I first went to uni, I was broke. Um, so I wanted <laughs> a cheap fragrance to wear uh, and I still love them both to this day. I think I'm on my third or fourth bottle of each. Love them. Musk is a very musky fragrance as the name suggests. Qualitatively, it smells like... The way your skin smells in the morning when you just wake up. Um, like if you woke up and like put your sheets over your head and just smelled the, the smell of your sleep. So you showered last night put on a, a, an obscure, pretty fragrance and went to sleep the way that you would smell, the way that your bed would smell the next morning. It's warm, skin-like, it smells like skin, warm, uh, and so I mean slightly floral, very vaguely floral. Like you wore something floral to bed and now it's worn off, so now you smell like skin and last night's fragrance, you know? It's a very warm, um, unassuming scent. I tend to wear it after a shower um, and to bed quite a bit. I also have White Mask by Jovan as well. Um, very pretty, white is a good way to describe this mask. Very, very super clean. If anything, this smells like that night, before, before the, the, the night before the mask morning is what this smells like. Just showered, you've put on a generic, ooh, this is leaking. I'm really having a very accident prone day. This is leaking. Oh no, what did I do? I don't know how I did that, but it's leaking. Anyway, um, it smells like, yes, you just showered, you put on some nice smelling lotion um, and got into bed, into fresh sheets. Cause it has a kind of a cottony cleanness. So cotton, floral lotion, this is really leaking. Can you see? There's another one, yeah. Really, really leaking. Okay, I'm gonna stop playing with that. Uh, cotton, floral lotion, and skin warmed in the shower, not warmed from sleep, you know? So it's, a, it's a cleaner musk fragrance. Generally, musk tends to smell like skin. The most raw form of musk to me smells like when you rub your wrists together. The smell of skin on skin is what musk, <laughs> is what musk generally smells like to me. But those, I think, are generally quite clean 
musks. They're not as animalic as most basic musks. I have a vintage here. Yeah. This is uh, Estela de private collection. The vintage. Um, this is a 1990s bottle. Um, I think it's 19. I had it um, dated. I think it was 1997 or 1996. Uh, Still smells good as new. Um, I mean, I keep them in a dark cabinet. They, my, my perfumes. I've never, I've never actually lost a fragrance to spoiling. Uh, and some of them I've had years and years. It's, it's really about how you care for them. And I'll do a perfume care video in the future. Don't know when. Um, yeah. Who? Okay. Very seventies. Very very seventies. It's a clean green floral fragrance. It's uh, very much in the line of Chanel number no. 19, but definitely more green. Uh, and the flowers aren't as much in the forefront as with Chanel 19. This is much more planty. The green is a lot more like, a lot more like the stem rather than the bud of the flower, you know? There's a floral smell, but it's in the background. You smell like flower stems and um, some, uh, oak moss, I think, not vetiver, but something else kind of woody in the background. Um, I think this smells like gardening. <laughs> it smells like gardening or like flower arrangement, you know? Hobbies like that, like a woman whose hobbies include gardening and flower arrangement. Very, very elegant in a, in a, in a, in a lifelike way, like flowers that still have life in them, you know? They haven't been sitting in a vase for four days, you know? I like it. I think it's very elegant. It, it does smell a bit vintage. There's a powderiness to it that's quite vintage, but I like it. Um, I, I do enjoy it. I didn't think I was going to wear much of it, but I've actually done quite a bit of damage. It's been, I think, five years I've owned this um, and I've done a bit of damage. I wear it from time to time. It layers well. Uh, I like it. I like to layer it with much more risque fragrances. It wears very well with Ombre Leather by Tom Ford. Uh, another cheapie is Calvin Klein's Eternity Intense. I've talked about this one ad infinitum. Powdery violet fragrance. It's almost like if, um, if Narciso Rodriguez did a violet fragrance. The powdery note is very much like a Narciso Rodriguez musk. Clean, powdery musk. And then violets, and the violets smell like those candies, um, palmer violets. I ate palmer violets when we were in England. I was six, maybe, <laughs> a long time ago. But the scent um, and the taste of palmer violets, one of those that stick to you for life. This smells like palmer violets and Narciso Rodriguez musk. I really, really love this one. It's very elegant. Um, smells a lot more expensive than what you pay for it. Oh, I smelled that before the, the alcohol had worn off. <sighs> yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It smells a lot more expensive than it actually is. Uh, as you can see, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. This, I purchased this this year. Quite enjoyed that one. Three from Elizabeth Arden. I'll start with Red Door. My mom wore this when I was younger uh, and I bought it for sentimental reasons and I actually kind of enjoy it. It is a very 90s, even 80s a bit in the vibe. Um, powdery, extremely floral, honey fragrance. It smells like honeybees. Um, you know how honeybees, like when you, if you go in a garden, let's say someone's having a garden wedding and there's honeybees around, the smell of honey on honeybees, not honey in a jar, but honey because there's bees um, pollinating flowers around, that heavy smell, heavy, sweet, sticky smell of honey, that, and lots of very vintage flowers. <laughs> flowers done the vintage way. Flowers done the 80s, 90s way. And powder. It is actually quite an old fashioned fragrance. It's, it's a bit dated, but there is a way to wear this. I find that worn lightly, one spray to the back of my neck and maybe one spray in the small of my back, it wears very well and will actually get compliments. More than that, and I actually get faces, you know these. Those faces. It can it can very very easily become too much, um, and so I do have to exercise restraint because usually I am a I go nuts. This requires restraint. It's most beautiful worn lightly, uh, and and most modern I think worn lightly. Worn heavily, it does smell 
like a 90s auntie for real um so proceed with caution with that one. it can smell very refined um i put it on my packaging for one of my businesses and all my customers tend to really enjoy the fragrance um because i, I spray it lightly um onto my packaging uh, but worn heavily that's that's not the one okay <laughs> so not the one another one from elizabeth arden is arden beauty uh this is a floral it smells like wildflowers in a meadow it's a very crisp green growing flowers you know like flowers again flowers with life in them yeah it's very it's very it's a meadow wildflowers in a meadow is the best way to describe it there's a grassy note and then a general wildflowers accord i really really like this one i thought this was great when i worked in an office i first started wearing this in the spring of 2011 um i bought this when i was in uni broke college student uh and really really enjoyed it i've never gotten over it and uh i highly i highly highly recommend this if you're looking for a budget fragrance that has maintained like this this isn't dated at all i feel like this is as modern today it smells like some of the fragrances that come out today i feel like this is what daisy by mark jacobs wishes it was um and and didn't come close to being <laughs> okay and lastly from elizabeth arden my favorite my absolute favorite elizabeth arden white tea love this one I mean, I've yammered on about this fragrance on this channel. I'm gonna put some on today. I don't have any fragrance on yet. <sighs> very clean, green spa fragrance. It smells like a very expensive Japanese spa. Yeah, slightly citrusy, um, but generally I would just call it a, a green, lemony, um, herbal, like herbaceous kind of fragrance. Oh gosh, it smells like a spa. Mmm, it smells like a spa day. I love this fragrance. Performance is, is respectable for an eau de toilette. I get easily four or five hours, um, which is pretty good for me with an eau de toilette. Usually eau de toilette don't perform very well on me, but that one does quite well for eau de toilette. It just, it's not gonna do the whole day. It, it is a cheapy and an eau de toilette, so, you know, in terms of performance, it will need a to top up during the day, but it's so cheap that I don't mind. And I generally tend to change fragrances during the day anyway, so I don't really need anything to last all day. Next up, Escada's Magnetism. Recent purchase for me, fruity, floral. Sweet, sweet, fruity, floral. Yeah, um, yeah, a, that's the best way to describe it. It smells like a, like a, the fruitiness is a bit, now that I think about it, the fruitiness is kind of like a fruity, uh, boiled sweet like a fruity a fruity candy a fruity like a paramende in, a, in the, the ones actually wrapped like a like a sweet you know and then you get really beautiful tropical sweet flowers as well i love it it smells a lot like the color it's quite a loud um un, unrestrained um fragrance it's not the most polished i wouldn't call it very polished i just I, I feel like it's one of those it's very exuberant it's very let's enjoy life um that kind of fragrance i like this for poolside um if i'm going to be wearing like you know hanging out by a pool i think this is a very good vibe for by the pool um you know have, hang out by the pool have a fruity cocktail that kind of vibe that's what i think suits that the best I have a fragrance from a Kenyan company called La Ritière, um, 1789. This is the eponymous fragrance and the only one that they have. It's, it's called, I think it's, it's called La Ritière Osmanthus, is the full name of it. It's an Osmanthus scent. It, it's a floral, it's a crisp, clean, golden floral, it, um, like a warm floral. Um, It smells like something Dior would have done. It kind of smells like a, like it would be a flanker of Dior Addict, like a, like a what I would have expected uh, Dior Addict of Hush to smell like. Um, okay, she doesn't even feel like it's related to the original Addict to me. Yeah, but this this smells like a like a like a more like a more golden take on Dior Addict uh, on that uh, floral vanilla or sweet floral on that kind of sweet floral base. Um, performance is wanting. I don't find it to be a very high performing fragrance. It doesn't last all day for me, um, but it's very affordable. It's about $45. It, I mean, it's really uh, very, very affordable. So I don't really have a problem with that. And I do also like the packaging. This um, gold uh, like plating is quite nice. 
I like it. And I, I generally like the very minimal aesthetic of the brand. Chopin. This is Wish by Chopin. Uh, Chopin is a mainly jewelry brand. Ooh. This is very reminiscent of Angel by Riglet. Very reminiscent of Angel. They took out a lot of the heavier, more difficult aspects, but it does smell a lot like Angel if you took out the chocolate and, re and replaced it with like whipped cream. There's a creamy, milky creamy uh, aspect to this that is not in Angel. And then this lacks that chocolatey, um, the chocolate and the cotton candy that Angel has. I mean, I think it's it's a um, it's an option if you struggle with Angel, but you want to wear something Angel esque, powerful, intense, lasts forever. The staying power on this is quite impressive um, and very very Angel esque. I don't really wear that one very much, uh, but I, I can't bring myself to let it go. I don't know. I mean, maybe I should. Because I don't reach for it very often. It needs a very specific vibe, as far as I'm concerned. Eclat de Peige by Longhorn. Um, this smells like <laughs> it smells like light blue um, by by Dolce & Gabbana with flowers. A floral light blue by Dolce & Gabbana. I think this would layer well with white tea. Let me see. Yeah, Dolce, Dolce & Gabbana light blue plus some florals. I really like it. Um, I really, really like it as I tend to wear um, Dolce & Gabbana, not I tend to, but I like to wear Dolce & Gabbana light blue layered with a floral. Very, very, a lot of the time when I do wear it, I do like to layer it because um, it plays well with others. This kind of makes the journey a bit shorter for me. I just pick it up and I have my flowers and my Dolce & Gabbana light blue freshness. I like it. I like it. Performance is the same as light blue. I get about six hours. This is my newest one. I just bought this three days ago. Uh, this is Elisa Parfum Royal. I remembered that I wanted to buy this when we talked about Elisa in the, in the previous video. I love it. I really, I love it. I love, I love this fragrance. <laughs> Royal is a very good name for this fragrance. It's quite a regal white floral fragrance. Um, in the same style as the original Le Parfum by Elisa, but definitely more, more, it has more body. Um, it has. It's very. It's very regal. It takes up space. You know, sits up straight. Drinks tea with a pinky up. It's regal. It's a very regal aspect to this fragrance. I would say the original La Parfum is bridal, whereas this is for a queen. Okay, and and not not Queen Elizabeth. This is for when Kate becomes queen. Okay, a modern queen. Queen of the 21st century, okay? Very, very regal, very refined, polished to perfection. I love it, I love it. That was a very good choice. I'm quite proud of that purchase. Two from Van Cleef and Appels. I have Rose Rouge, which is a sweet, jammy rose. I love it. Oh, very, very jammy, very jammy rose. Um, it made rose jam with rose petals and some like blackberries, and maybe raspberries. Sweet tart berries. That's what you get. It's a sweet rose fragrance without being vanillic. It's, it has a tartness, like a tart fruitiness to it. I love it. Performance on this is um, quite impressive as well for the type of fragrance that it is. It doesn't smell like it's going to be a fragrance with really impressive performance, but I get about maybe seven to eight hours from it, which is more than the usual on my skin. Mm. I really enjoy it. Another another fragrance that plays well with others, it layers very well. Um, if I want to sweeten up any of my other roses, I have been layering with that one. I mean, look at that. It's quite a bit of damage for a 2020 purchase. Then we've got Van Cleef & Arpel Ampe, Amperial. Um, amber. It's, it's a warm, vanillic, benzoiny amber. So almost powdery, but not quite in that benzoin way. Uh, but largely just, a, it just smells like warmth, like sweet warmth. It's really, really lovely. I feel like my description isn't doing it justice. It's, it's not a complex fragrance by any means, but it's, the beauty is in the simplicity of this fragrance. It's a beautifully simple, elegant amber. I love it. I really, really love it. Uh, layers well, 
I wear it often with Tom Ford. If I'm going to layer it, I layer it with Tom Ford because it gives Tom Ford uh, a warmth that sometimes Tom Ford can lack. Uh, Tom Ford fragrances are very complex and interesting, but sometimes they lack warmth, almost like they're kind of not real. It's very hard to explain. This gives them warmth. Um, I, I do quite like to layer this. Mostly with fragrances with black packaging, I've, I've noticed. I tend to layer this with other fragrances that have black packaging. It works best that way. Clangon, a largely skincare brand. I have two fragrances from them. Uh, first is, let me start with this one. Eau de Namizante by Clangon, which is their, I think their most well-known one. Uh, it's a, it's a very, very natural smelling fragrance. It smells like nature. It smells like being outside in nature like in a forest. Like if you went to one of these these forest resorts, you know, or like these luxe cabins kind of, you know? It's like a spa experience in the forest. I don't, I don't know. It's very, very natural smelling, kind of mossy, kind of herbal, and kind of damp, like the way, like a, like damp earth is what it smells like. Damp earth, herbs, and woods. Um, I find it a very interesting fragrance, uh, very energizing as well. There's a ginger note as well. I, I smell ginger that really gives it a kick, like really, really makes it kicky. Really, really gives it a kick. Gives it, gives it, gives it a bit of pizzazz. Um, I wear this a lot to work out. It really wakes me up in the mornings. And then on the opposite end, I have Orisosant, which I wear to bed most often. This smells like shampoo. It smells like expensive shampoo, the kind of shampoo you have to buy at a salon. Yeah, um, yeah, it smells like shampoo to me um, in a very in a clean way. I like to wear it to bed because um, it makes me it makes me feel like clean. Like you know when you you know when you on days when you wash your hair, there's a there's a there's a certain feeling of cleanliness that comes with washing your hair as well as showering. Um, I don't wash my hair every day. Um, but I always shower before bed. This makes days when I haven't washed my hair smell like I have washed my hair. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. It's a very shampooy, clean, comforting scent for me. Uh, very calming as well. Uh, Issey Miyake, a scent by Issey Miyake. This is another one that I wear to work out mostly. It smells like mountain top air. Um, yeah, it smells like mountain top air. It reminds me of Whistler. Uh, my fiance, my ex fiance, <laughs> took me to Whistler. What year was that? 2014, maybe? 2013? Um, and it smelled, anyway, it smelled like, it smelled like this. It smells like, you know how air in the mountains is thinner? It just smells thinner. Um, that and little mountain flowers. Um, yeah, quite crisp, quite very, it's a very thin fragrance. Um, just smells like snow, like cold, thin, snowy air and flowers. Um, it smells like Whistler. It just smells like skiing and Whistler to me. Uh, I wear this to work out. That's the whole thing. Miniso, I have one fragrance from Miniso. I love it because it smells like Le Labo's Santal 33. This is Midsummer Firefly by Miniso. That's really all there is to say about this fragrance. It smells exactly like Le Labo's Santal 33. Uh, maybe slightly, slightly sweeter. Slightly, about that much sweeter. It's lovely. It, it, it's really incredible that they were able to copy it. I mean, it's shameless, but it's it's a spot on copy. The performance, of course, is nowhere near the, the lovers. This doesn't even give me three hours. <laughs> like, I probably land on about two hours, but it's so cheap that who cares? You throw it in your bag and keep it pushing. Okay, into niche we go. Uh, first, I've got Aqua de Palmas. Uh, Ginepro di Sardegna from the Blue Mediterraneo line. Don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't speak very good Italian. I speak very basic Italian. <laughs> but quite true to the name, Ginepro is the Italian for juniper. It smells like gin. It smells like a gin cocktail with herbs in it. If you made if you made a gin cocktail with rosemary in it, I think it would smell like this. It just it smells like a very refreshing gin cocktail with some herbs in it. The the smell is it yeah, like if you if you if you mulled if you mulled your cocktail with 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 rosemary and maybe maybe 
maybe basil. There's another herb that I, I've never been able to put my finger on. But yeah, very, very refreshing, very good for hot weather. I like it for hot weather specifically because it, it, it smells like an icy cocktail. Um, so it's refreshing in that sense. Um, I really enjoy it. I've done damage. I got the biggest bottle, which is 150 mil, right? Yeah, 150 mil. And I'm quite happy with this purchase. It's not lasted me as long as I thought it would because I was thinking 150 mil will last me the rest of my life. Yeah, I'm going to be done with this by the end of next year, I'm sure. Another one from Aqua de Palma is uh, Quercia, which is a, it's a word for oak. This is an oak moss fragrance. Um, I, it's supposed to be for men. I don't believe in that. I, I just, it's a, it's such a stupid rule. I, I just, I think this smells like good groomy. I can see how it would smell on a man. I think it would smell lovely on a man. I've actually purchased it as a gift before. Um, but I, I like it on me because it smells a little bit like, it smells like good grooming. It smells like, like, like all of your grooming products are really expensive, like, like expensive lotions and potions, you know? The general effect is very much like good grooming. Like you have a very, you have a very intensive toilet. Um, you know what I mean? I don't know. I like it. I think it smells very expensive. It smells like shmoney honey. It smells like you, you take very good care of yourself. You're, you're expensive to maintain. It smells high maintenance, okay? I really, really love this one. I think on a man, it would probably make me think that his aftershave or his shaving cream is very expensive. And he shaves with those razors. You know the, the razor, the barber razors? That's what it makes me think of. Expensive grooming is what it smells like to me. I don't know. So, so vague, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. One from Jo Malone. Um, I've really tried with Jo Malone, but I like I find a lot of their fragrances to be a bit like elevated body mist, especially the ones in the clear packaging. The only ones that I've liked from them are the ones in the black packaging. There's two more that I want to buy, actually from this line, from the, it's called Cologne Intense line with the black packaging. Um, but for now, the only one that I own is Velvet Rose and Oud. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> ah, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is like a slightly more restrained Noir de Noir by Tom Ford. When Noir de Noir has a bit of a danger to it, there's a bit of an edgy aspect to Noir de Noir. This is a lot safer. The fundamental aspects are almost the same, roses and oud, but this smells more like a soapy rose. It's a cleaner rose. There's less, um, there's less edge to it, which I like because I can't always wear Noir de Noir, whereas this I could reach for literally any day. As much as it looks like it might be a more intense fragrance, I could wear this during the day, no problem, because of the soapy quality of the rose. I love it. I love it. I think if there's any men that want to wear rose and oud and perhaps wear it to the office, this is the type of rose and oud that I think is very unisex and very, very wearable. Um, this would do offices, dates, events very well. Um, I love it. I really love this fragrance. Um, I want a couple more because of how much I love that fragrance. <laughs> a cheapie, um, a, a niche cheapie, which is kind of a, a, a kind of a juxtaposition in a way because niche pricing tends to get a bit crazy. But this is Ragba Wood Intense by Latafa. <sighs> okay. Yeah, this takes guts. It needs cojones. It needs it, yeah, it, it, need, it needs chest. <laughs> this is a very very intense smoky oud fragrance with a very interesting rubber note. It smells like if you went to Monte Carlo for the Grand Prix, um, the smell of rubber burning on the road, like like. Like, you know when you break really hard and then the rubber burns on the road? There's that sweet smell of burning rubber. Not burning, but like hot rubber. Just the smell of tires. Tires on tar and then you break real hard, you know? Yeah, it's so, so hard that you leave streaks. I don't know why I'm struggling to get this out. That sweet smell of rubber and tar and then oud and burnt sugar. 
and the sugar is definitely burnt because there's a smoky quality to the sugar it's interesting it's a very I this I'm this smells like the Middle East to me <laughs> it smells like Middle Eastern wealthy people watching Formula One in Monte Carlo that's what it smells like it's quite quite a decadent fragrance very indulgent it smells a lot more expensive than it is honestly it smells like something that would come out of the Tom Ford exclusive line um, what's it called the private blends collection it, it smells like it belongs in that line. I don't know. I really love it. I've seen varying reviews on it. Hold on, let me put it on my fingertips. I've seen varying reviews on it, but I quite, I really, really love this fragrance. It's very well executed. It's, it, 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 it has a very clear image for me in my head. Quite like that, um, especially because it's so affordable. From Stefan and Berluca, I have Une Nuit à Doha. Night in Doha. Yeah. Um, it smells like the Middle East as well. Hot sand. Hot sand as viewed from your luxurious hotel room in the Middle East. Um, I've never been to Doha, but this gives me Abu Dhabi vibes. Um, indulgent wealth in the Middle East. Um, they sent me that, that Middle Eastern fragrance smell. It's not quite, it's not like a heavy oud, but it's there. Paired with the smell of hot sand. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. Like sweet hot sand. I don't know. That's that's the, the best way. Sand is so hot that you get the waves, you know, the waves in the air on top of it. Like that. And, and, and a sweet smooth old it has a bit of like an osmanthus kind of floral oh it's lovely it, it, it's uh it's very Abu Dhabi you know very indulgent wealth you know people who own people who can create rain you know people who own who can make islands people who like wealth okay this smells very fancy <laughs> two from Serge Dupont I've owned maybe four or five but I'm left with just the two that I love um, first is Fleur de Citronnier by Serge Luton. As the name suggests, this is a lemon blossom fragrance. Just smells like straight up lemon blossom. It's I took off the sprayers because I'm I'm liking to dab these more than to spray. Very cottony clean floral fragrance. I love it. I wore this a lot uh, when I was working in corporate. It was a very good office pick. Uh, very very good office pick. Um, really ran through this in the office and now I'm, I'm left with just that and I'm scared to finish it because this is hard to get in short. <laughs> I've also got Jeu de Peur by, by Serge Luton, French for skin games. This doesn't smell like skin to me. The most skin-like Serge Luton fragrance is Claire de Musk, um, which I've owned and loved but I just feel like Jovan White Musk is a is a is an easier to wear musk fragrance, so I, I didn't repurchase it when I finished it. Jeu de Pearl doesn't smell like skin to me. Jeu de Pearl smells like baking to me. It smells like pastry, buttery, flaky croissant baking. Like right in the in the process of baking, you've thrown your croissant into the oven. They've been in there maybe maybe a, a few minutes. They're just starting to get golden. The way that your kitchen would smell. That's what this smells like. It's incredible. They've captured the smell of a French boulangerie. There's a there's a there's a pastry shop kind of cafe at um, at Yaya Centre in Nairobi. It's called Alexandre. Um, when they're baking in the morning, if you go early in the morning and they're just baking, or even to an art cafe when they've just started to bake, this is what that smells like. Baking pastry. I really love it I, I, because it's very artistic to cap, capture the smell of that but it's just very difficult to wear because not often do I want to smell like a French bakery. When I first bought it I thought this is excellent, this is going to be my signature, everybody loves the smell of baking, I'm going to be the girl that smells like a bakery, everybody's going to love it. It gets old quickly, um, it's not something you want to smell like all the time, sometimes I crave it but it only sometimes, I can't, I, very rarely do I just feel like I'm just gonna throw that on. No, I need I need to crave it, and it's usually because I'm craving pastry. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't I, I don't know. It's very well executed, very artistic. 
Uh, speaking of baking, Laval Trian Non by Lancome. I know that Lancome is technically a designer line, but this is from their Maison Lancome line, so I consider this niche. Um, <laughs> contrary to the name, it's not it's not as much of a lavender fragrance as it is a vanilla fragrance. I'm not a big vanilla lover. Um, it takes a very special vanilla to capture my my interest. This is a very special vanilla. It just it smells like French lavender vanilla cookies. If you made and I say French because it's not not American baking. Every time I talk about this fragrance, I have to specify that it's French because it's not super sweet and sugary. It's vanilla, yes, but it's not sugar, which sometimes I think because they they, they, they are so often um, uh, put together in fragrances where vanilla is usually quite sugary sweet, a lot of the time people assume that vanilla will be sugary. This is not a sugary vanilla. It smells like actual vanilla bean, like Madagascan vanilla beans and lavender. So if you grated, uh, vanilla bean um, and and chopped up some lavender and baked it into very basic cookies that's what this smells like oh uh, oh I love it it's beautiful a very very French sophisticated vanilla which usually is a challenge for me I like I need vanilla to be sophisticated and it it isn't always sometimes it's really not you know this is lovely lovely I want a few more from this line. I want the iris one. I want the tube rose castan, and I want roses beberanza because I've, I mean I've sampled them all. I know that I want them. It's a very, very beautifully done line in general. This way, this this Maison Lancome line, top notch. I'm not the biggest fan of Lancome, as you guys know. I I strongly detest La Vie Belle. Um, most of their ma mainstream fragrances are not really for me. But this Maison Lancome line, girl. Girl, probably my favorite exclusive line from a designer after Tom Ford. And maybe even neck and neck with Tom Ford. I just don't have as many as I do from Tom Ford. Okay, we have four more to get through. Five to get through. <laughs> oh, Tiziana Terenzi Popola. This is a very wicked rose fragrance. Very witchy. <laughs> very, yeah, very witchy and evil and scheming. Very um, evil queen. Uh, what's that woman? The one from the kids movie, Maleficent, like that, like an evil queen. Um, and usually those characters are, usually I think the villains in in um, in cartoons have the best character development in, 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 in my opinion and usually the best lines. Uh, they, they think, I feel like they'd be more fun to hang out with than, than the, the heroes, you know? I'd rather ha hang out with Ursula than with Ariel. You know, yeah, this is a very wicked witch of the West type of fragrance. Rose, and it's a rose with the, the stem and the thorns, a complete rose, and oud, and a smoky, kind of incense y, frankincense, Catholic church kind of fragrance. It, mm, it smells like a, like a, like a sexy nun. It's weird. It, <laughs> or like a nun with a backstory. A nun who joined the convent because she wants to eventually kill the 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 Pope. You know? Like she, she has a backstory and a big revenge story. You know? <laughs> character development. This has a lot of character, this fragrance. I love the packaging too. This lid. This, I, I mean, I know you can't see it, but this weighs a ton. I, I love it, it's very well done. They have that kind of zodiac star sign, whatever thing on the top, love it. Very beautiful packaging. Uh, another rose, Atelier Cologne, Rose Anonyme. Oh my gosh, Hermione Granger. It smells like old roses or like dried roses and old books. Like, you know the, the, the way that old paperbacks smell kind of sweet, that sweet paper of old paperback books? That's what it smells like. It's very cerebral and very, I find it very English. Like if you squeeze, do you know how people squeeze roses in books? Um, if you squeeze the rose, if you squeezed a beautiful fragrant red rose in a paperback and left it there for years on end and came back and smelled it, it would smell like 
the sweet scent of old paper and roses. I love it. I think it's lovely. It's meant to have an old note, which I don't get at all. I just get roses and um, paper. Um, they call it papyrus officially, but I think it smells like a paper bag. I love it. It's a very Hermione Granger fragrance. Love it. Love it. Love it. Another rose from Mansera. This is Roses Greedy. I've had quite a few Mansera fragrances, but since my cull, I'm only left with two. Um, Roses Greedy by Mansera is a it needs someone that's really for roses. You have to love roses. You have to really, really enjoy roses. It smells like a multitude of pink roses. Pink. Um, they are more pretty than sexy. It's more of a pretty fragrance than a sexy fragrance. Pink like that, actually. <laughs> pink like that. Um, and sugar. Uh, icing sugar. I really like it. It's a very good um, simplistic rose, good for layering. It has that, that general Mansera base, but I wouldn't say that it's heavy on the oud as most Mansera fragrances are. I love it. it it's, almost, it's almost French in the way that the rose is executed. I, I imagine that the, the rose feels in grass, never been, but I imagine that that's what it would smell like to see so many roses, just roses as far as the eye can see. I imagine that's what this would smell like. I really enjoy this one. I layer it a lot. And then velvet, if you've not seen Mansara packaging, they come in a box in a bag like that so that you can pack them with ease. Um, this one is Velvet Vanilla by Mansara. I mean, the name is a bit misleading. It's not, yes, there's vanilla in there, but it is a white floral and vanilla fragrance. Oh, very syrupy. Um, smooth, golden, white floral and vanilla fragrance. I love it. I think it's very sexy, very sensual. I love this for evenings. Oh, it's really, really beautiful. It's, um, I think it's best worn. See this look that I have on today, this Veronica Lake Rapunzel hair. It's long hair in sexy body waves on a date. I think I need more of a smoky eye though. This is best for that. Oh, it's lovely. You know, drinking champagne, having a beautiful time, laughing, throwing your head back on a lovely day with a lovely man. Like it. Like it a lot. And finally, uh, my newest niche, right? Well, with the exception of Afternoon Swim, rest in peace, <laughs> is Entente Café by Montal Paris. This is basically the same fragrance as Roses Veni by Mansera, but this doesn't give me a headache. I don't know what they've taken out or put in to this one, uh, but Roses Veni would give me a headache. I always thought it was lovely. I wore it quite a bit. I enjoyed it, but it gave me a headache to wear. This doesn't. It's roses, deep red, red roses, like my Ribena. Roses that color. Uh, my favorite variety of rose is the Papa Mayant. This smells like Papa Mayant. Deep, velvety, dark red roses. And a very deep vanilla syrup. The syrup is almost like, almost like cough syrup. There's a slightly medicinal something to it that makes me think of cough syrup, like cough syrup that's very vanilla, very highly vanilla flavored. Um, and roses. I really love it. It's, a, it's quite a sexy, oh, I can't put this on because I have, yeah, I still smell like, actually I smell like this more than white tea. Um, oh, I should wear this soon. It's it's really, really lovely. I'm, I'm enjoying it a great deal. It's it's. I wouldn't call this very very Middle Eastern. I don't get a lot of um, oud from this either. Just a very deep rose and a very deep syrupy, slightly medicinal vanilla. I love it. And that's it for my entire fragrance collection. My God, my like my jaw is tired from all of the amory. Um, this one looks like it's gonna be longer than the other ones, but it's fine. It's the last one, you know. To go out with a bang. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this series. Let me know what you'd like me to do for perfume next. I do have a list, but I'd like to hear what you'd like to see the most. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Love you. Mean it. Bye.